Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Pastoral Thoughts Podcast. Hope you're having a good day. Um, got an exciting topic today. We're going to talk about Bible reading. And so we're going to, this is going to be an applicable podcast for everybody. And um, I try not to be the Switzerland of podcasts. So if I, you know, have a podcast that I talk about one particular thing, a lot of people aren't going to be interested in, I, you know, I think, oh, well, I mean, they can listen to something else. But uh, this one is, it's evergreen, meaning, it, you know, if we do it right, people could listen to it 100 years from now and still get a blessing out of it. Uh, and then it applies to everybody. And uh, back by popular demand, too, we have the favorite guest of the Pastoral Thoughts podcast, and that is, uh, are you a doctor yet? Dr. D- Dave Cellini. Absolutely not. No, well, no, I'm thinking about getting into presenting um, yeah. <laughs> honorary doctorates on the pastoral thoughts. Yeah, <laughs> I, d- I would take one from this program. <laughs> Absolutely. I would take one from here, but it's great to be here. Looking forward to talking about this great subject. And uh, we did this once before. It was very popular and just had a lot of feedback on it. And we'll probably be rehashing a lot of the points that we went into before, but it's very important. It's one of those things that you have to keep the important things before you and remind yourself why they are important and really the most important thing uh, in the world is your relationship to the Word of God and the Word of God's relationship to you. And so uh, reading your Bible every day. Now, are we just sticking about? to the Word of God, or are we going Word of Bible and prayer? Whatever you want to do, Dave. Okay. <laughs> hey, hey you've, been, uh, you've been studying about depression lately. I have been reading about it. Yeah, what have you found out? What are some of the highlights? Wow. We'll have to do a podcast on that. For sure. I, I would love to. It would take some work. We'd have to prepare for it. Yeah, for sure. There is, um, I have, I've come across some good books just starting to get into it, listen to a couple sermons, uh, Mark Tossel, in, in some circles, is, is known. He was a Baptist missionary in Australia who went through some uh, some serious depression and has really kind of, from what I can tell, put this on the map in our type of circles. Mm-hmm. And um, it's one of those things that's just kind of, I think, been looked at from the wrong perspective. Uh, and a lot of people are afraid to talk about it because it's um, looked down upon or seen as unspiritual or a, or a moral failure rather than uh, it's just it's amazing the examples in scripture of people who had days that were so low so dark the best of Christians I mean you think who, of, who are some of the big ones big so names. you think of John the Baptist who questioned the the if Jesus mm-hmm. Christ was the Messiah you think of um, at times Elijah where, Elijah, who you know wished he he would die, Job, um, Moses, um, there were a, a couple others that uh, Jeremiah was one. Mm-hmm. And obviously, the Apostle Paul, <clears throat> sure, pressed then, down on every side. Mm-hmm. And you look at that. Many of the Psalms talk about just the darkness, being overwhelmed, mm-hmm. and just questioning God. And then in the Messianic Psalm. Uh, being why, referred why to, art thou cast down, O oh my soul? Yeah, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken mm. me? You know, and this is a prayer of a man, though it's prophetic, but still, you know, in questioning God, mm-hmm. one of the greatest Christians. And so it's encouraging to realize that you're not alone because so many people, they, they think these thoughts and they're like, nobody else could think this. What's wrong with me? So what, you know, what would you think if you saw Job in the ashes, rent clothes, shaved head, uh, weeping and lamenting, you would think that um, he was so far from God. Yeah. But, I mean, he was actually sorry. I just got done with uh, Lamentations, and Lamentations is full of lament and woe over the city of Jerusalem and how sad Jeremiah is. And really what we see in Jeremiah is the sorrow of Christ. Mm-hmm. So if you go into the Garden of Gethsemane and you see Christ, again, he's, he doesn't say well, you know, the devil's really attacking, but we're just praising God. You yeah. know, so you don't see him in there no. like that. Um, and, and that's what we, and that's what I remember hearing a lot of that false um, topside attitude type thing you know, when I was in Bible college and early on in my Christian mm-hmm. life. And like, you weren't allowed to talk about being discouraged. You weren't allowed to, um, there was, it just, that wasn't the right thing to do. And I think that was, that was dangerous. Yes. And so there's, um, there's a difference between like anxiety and also depression. A lot of times depression, you don't know why 
again, why art thou cast down on my soul? Anxious a lot of times is for things in our life, and those are close relations. Yep. Um, I love the definition I heard recently where somebody said um, to be discouraged is, is a loss of heart, mm-hmm. but to be depressed is a loss of hope. There you go, yeah. And that was just like, man, hope deferred make it the heart sick. Right. And you look up hope in the Bible, it's just a very interesting subject matter. Yeah. Um, two great um, guys in history, Charles Haddon Spurgeon was uh, a very depressing person. And he writes at length openly and honestly about the great dark depths and how that he would never wish it on his worst enemy, the valleys that he had been through. Mm-hmm. And it was probably tied a lot to his poor health because um, we are a trichotomy and those are all interweaved, yes. interwoven. <laughs> yes. Um, and so, you know, he missed a third of all preaching engagements due to health. So, you know, people a lot of times don't think that about him. He'd have to get out of London. He'd be so depressed mm-hmm. uh, in, in body and soul that he'd have to go to Mentone, France, and sit in the sunshine and do yeah. nothing, which to him was like murder. Yeah. Um, and then I just, you had, Yeah, I just ordered a book today called The Sor- Sorrows of Spurgeon. Okay. Looking forward to reading yeah, that. Yeah, wow. Uh, yeah, I haven't heard of that book. That sounds yeah. amazing. Um, Martin Lloyd-Jones. Uh, the great preacher, and then the doctor, everybody, and just, he, he was like a, a steady Freddy. I mean, just, you know, week after week, he was the, um, like the stoic doctor, but he went through a time, I think it was like two or three years, where he was very depressed, like even on vacation, like usually he'd bring like, you know, on holiday, you know, he'd take a extended holiday, uh, you know, three or four weeks in the summer, and um, take stacks and stacks of books and read and study, uh, and, um during this time, he he wouldn't even read. He wasn't interested. He couldn't even ha- he couldn't ha- he didn't even have an appetite for knowledge. Mm. And um, yeah, so that's a real thing that people go through, and I think that's normal. Um, on Sunday mornings, we were jumping into First Peter, and and Peter is known as the Apostle of Hope, mm-hmm. and, and he gives hope to the scattered flock. And um, he said they're going to be suffering. Um, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is now to tr- to try you. And he talks about this great uh, mystery between the peace of passes understanding and suffering. And he says they're not they're not apart; they're actually together. Mm-hmm. So, in the midst of the suffering, um, and it has a lot to do with there's lesser hopes than there is the lively hope. He talks about, and the lively hope is Christ. Mm-hmm. So, as other uh, dead hopes die in our life. You know, this Sunday we're going to be on um, the, it's going to be on the Word of God. And it says, um, being born again, not by corruptible seed, but by incorruptible seed, by the Word of God. And it says, all flesh is as grass mm-hmm. and the flower of, and fadeth as the flower of grass. And and so, but he that is born again by the Word of God is lives forever. Mm-hmm. And so you have all flesh is fading and all hopes in this world, no matter what they are, any false hopes, they're going to fade away. And there's only one living. There's only one eternal hope. So it would be the normal experience for people that they're dying in one aspect. We're continually dying mm-hmm. and suffering. Yeah. And suffering works an eternal way to glory. Mm-hmm. And it really reveals Christ to us and also in us when we're going through the suffering. So to be depressed or downcast is like a, to- a totally normal experience for the Christian. It's not abnormal. It's normal. And then I think people emotionally are different. You know, you're a music guy, so you're a little bit more emotional than I am. You have highs and lows. (laughs) You know, know, I'm a little bit more. And if, and if I'm low, I'm probably just like a little low for a long time or whatever, you know? And and so there's, there is different. um, And I can go through all of them in one day. (laughs) Yeah, sure. Sometimes one hour. Sure. You know, it's yeah. amazing. So each person's, yeah, each person's different, but they are going to experience times of uh, being downcast, depressed, and, you know, anybody in the Bible has experienced that, including Christ. Yeah, and it's it's just very encouraging to know that, to, to begin to understand that there's not something wrong with you. Right. You know? Yeah, it's a normal experience. For sure. A Christian experience. Yeah, and it's really joy in the midst of suffering. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. Amen. Anyway, so we could have talked about that, but some other other day that would have taken a lot more work. <laughs> it, it would have, uh, and so we can we can talk about uh, this is going to be you know testimonial and tips and things that we have learned along the way, um, reading our Bible and kind of different uh, 
our different habits and our you know different things that we have going on right now in our Bible reading. But um, how how has Bible reading played a role in your life? Wow. So from the very beginning, when I first uh, got saved and started serving the Lord, um, I started the way a lot of people have have it suggested to them. Somebody said, you know, read the Book of John. Mm-hmm. And I got in the book of John. I can picture going up in my bedroom as a teenager, just opening my Bible, my my cheap gift Bible that it had mm-hmm. given to me, and uh, and just starting to read and getting through that. And um, not long, uh, maybe a year or so into that, after growing and just kind of stumbling, reading here and there, um, a, a, a brother Dennis Coral had come to our church and preached a sermon. And I don't remember what it was about, but I remember making a commitment at the altar to read the Bible for 15 minutes every day before I did anything else. Mm -hmm. And so that commitment there really began to be something that started to mold me in time um, and kind of just grew and grew from there. And yeah. Yeah, there's so much more that could be said. And, about and when that, you but. made that commitment, that decision to read your Bible every day, would you say that like changed your life? It definitely did. There's, you think of the power and the life of God's word, and you don't know it at the time, mm-hmm. but it, it it just it's all brand new to me. It's life. It's spirit. Yeah, and I'm learning things literally. Um, about God and about the Christian life and and taking it at face value. And it just really began to mold me and change me. Yeah. So if you want to change your life, you change your habits. It's not just going to be some sort of decision or whatever, but you incorporated the Word of God into every single day of your life. And so you designated, and then the first things, first part of the, your day, you designated the first part of your day to the Lord. And, um, you know, and it transformed you. There's that picture, you know, Christ said, I am the bread of life. And I think of the manna that came down from heaven. And uh, they had to go out and gather that manna every single morning. It did not fall into their mouth. You know, some Christians believe just because they're saved that um, they have spiritual sustenance. No, the word of God is your sustenance. You have to feed the spiritual man. You have to feed on the bread of life. You have to feed on Jesus Christ through his word, see him through the word. And uh, remember that manna was like six days and then there was a special day, the Sabbath day. And so there was one day a week that was set aside for uh, the uh, the Word of God. It was the Word of God day, and that would have been the Jewish Sabbath. We celebrate the resurrection of Christ on the first day of the week, but that is your special day in the Word of God. You know, and it's nice, you know, a lot of, most churches, um, you're going to be in the Word all day on Sunday. Well, the people who are the hungriest to hear the Word on Sunday— are not the people you think, well, it's the people who starve themselves all week. Like, no, they've been filling up on other things. It's going to be the people who have been reading the word all week. They come with uh, ready appetites, a healthy appetite for the word of God, and they enjoy Sunday so much more. Yes. And um, so the, you know, the people who are just waiting for Sunday for the word of God, they're, they're depriving themselves terribly. Yes. That's so true. And the more you read it, the more you desire it. I heard an, an int- a very interesting statement recently about how they're talking about what's the greatest accountability uh, for a person in the ministry and how you, you can have people in your life, but it, at the end of the day, you can always lie to somebody. Mm-hmm. But he said the greatest accountability you can have is your your walk with the Lord and, and your relationship with the Word of God. Because the Bible says... Um, um, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Mm-hmm. And he said, when you get that taste for God's word in your life and you really begin to feel its satisfying nature, mm-hmm. you you don't want to do anything to miss that. And there's nothing else in the whole entire world like the word of God. Mm-hmm. So I've got tons of books. Sweeter but, also But there honey. ain't there ain't no book that replaces this. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And I can't be inspired, even though, you know, I enjoy Christian fellowship with you. You can't inspire me the same way the Word of God can or right. anything else. And so the only way I can feed my soul uh, is is through uh, God's Word. Unfortunately for me, for whatever reason, like I knew from the example of my parents, I grew up the way you were, that you read your Bible every day. Mm-hmm. 
And so shortly after I got saved, I mean, the one thing that I did right in my life, well, there's, th- there's three things, really. There's a three-legged stool. You know, it's the Bible reading, prayer, and then church. And fortunately, I, I got involved in all three of those right out of the blocks. And that's like, if you do those three things consistently, um, something's going to happen in your life. Mm-hmm. And, and so, I, you know, you change in increments and you change through habits. And so one of the things instinctively I knew when I first got saved is I need to read the Bible every day. Mm-hmm. And so like you, that was like the first thing out of the blocks in the morning. And um, I know you read the book Power of Habit. But I mean, really, it's all about you are who you're, what your habits are. And you got to figure out what the most important thing is, is your life is mm-hmm. and schedule it in your daily habit. Um, and so, you know, you know, once I started reading the word of God, the, you know, the rest was history and the rest falls into place. And I think if it goes in that order, the word of God, and then when God speaks to you through his word, then you know how to pray. You can pray in the Holy Ghost. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then also you're ready for the house of God because you're spiritually prepared and you can go in and receive a blessing and then also give a blessing when you go into church. And those three things, um, you know, really catapult you forward. But the first thing is reading the Word of God every day. Yeah, absolutely. You, you I mean, you're, you nailed it. When you talk about the habit, when you do that every day, it's just that's, that changes your destiny, mm-hmm. really. And you see it as a little thing. And um, you mentioned the book. I don't know if you're referring to Atomic Habits. Atomic Habits. Yeah, but um, yeah, and he he, he makes you, you he, got James Clear. Uh, yeah, he, uh, he, quote here. I, I do. <laughs> good. I, I do. He's an amazing guy. Yeah, I think about that book, and it's secular, but it's literally a situation where the children of this world are wiser than the children mm-hmm. of light because it it's because he looks at human nature. And you know, and talks it's, about the habitual yeah, nature. It's of discipleship. The, Mm-hmm. one-on-one without the Bible. Mm-hmm. But anyway, he, he talks about the beginning about that 1%, that 1%. If you get 1% better every day for a year, you'll end up 37 times better than uh, by the time you're done. And you take, it seems inconsi- in, in, insignificant, you know, a chapter of the Bible, you know, you, you, yeah. you know, and we see these people that we admire, you know, that are spiritual mentors, and we're like, we want to be like them right away. But no, no, mm-hmm. you start, just start doing something every day. Uh, yeah. It's organic. It'll mm-hmm. grow. Mm-hmm. You'll want more. Yes. And you're just going to get yourself discouraged, you know, if you try something that you're not ready for. No, and I, it's it's one of those things you smell the roses, you know, you just, um, just do a little bit every day, <clears throat> you know, especially starting off. Just get, do what you can, not what you can't. And uh, let's say you you only can read the Bible for 15 minutes a day. I think if you can't read the Bible for 15 minutes a day, you need to do something drastic in your life. Um, but <laughs> quit your job or <laughs> quit what you're doing. So let's say if there's only 15 minutes of Bible reading every single day, uh, I mean, you would know what's uh, 15 minutes times 365. Yeah, exactly. I don't know, but it's hours and hours and hours and, and hours. let me say this. If you don't have 15 minutes to read the Bible, shut this podcast off <laughs> right now. <laughs> That's and right. read That's your right. Bible. Amen, brother. <laughs> That's good <laughs> preaching. Um, yeah, yeah, you are far too busy than God ever intended you to be. That's for sure. Um, so, yeah, so if you read 15 minutes a day by the end of the year, that would be probably 100 hours or something. Something like that. <laughs> it would be a quarter of, it'd be one-fourth of 365. Right. So let's say 75. 75 hours you read yes. the Bible, mm-hmm. and it just built up day after day, and then compound that times 10 years, 20 years. Uh, And so if you, all you did for the rest of your life is read the Bible 15 minutes a day, uh, you have, you have a pretty good understanding of scripture, especially if you're going to the house of the Lord and a good Bible preaching church, um, you would have a a layman's understanding of the word of God. Absolutely. And the the thing about the Christian life, it's so much about consistency, faithfulness. Mm -hmm. If you could just do something every day and keep doing it, don't quit. That's going to change your life. Absolutely change your life. I remember uh, Brother Vineyard, when he'd preach, he'd say, you know, people get in trouble and come into my office. And one of the questions I always ask them says, tell me about your Bible reading. Mm -hmm. And every single time, 100% of the time, the people who have destroyed their life have not been reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. Yeah. Yeah, I heard a, a quote just the other day. By Donald Barnhouse, he says, there are many a Christian who could find the whole secret of a life of defeat in a neglected Bible. Oh, yeah. 
profound. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this book will keep you from sin or sin will keep you from this book. And, right. you know, um, <laughs> hundreds of quotes like this. Every people, man of God has a quote like that. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah absolutely. So true. Um, you know, another thing too, you know, Brother Vineyard talked about the, the, the sin that people get into and it was because they didn't have a habitual Bible reading time. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing too, a lot of people doubt their salvation. You know, mm-hmm. they'll, and I don't know if I'm saved. And, I, and one of the things I'll ask is, uh, well, tell me how consistent is your Bible reading? Um, and so it says the spirit bears witness to our spirit that we are the children of God. Well, how the Holy Spirit speaks to me is through the word of God. It is the mechanism. Mm-hmm. Um, so if I uh, haven't been opening up the word of God and in, in being in it enough to let God speak to me through that, how am I going to know whether or not I'm saved? Right. Faith cometh by hearing. It's got to be the spirit confirming it. So I guarantee you, as long as I've been saved and pastor and whatever, if I stop my Bible reading today, uh, I don't, a week, month, a day, <laughs> whatever, I'm going to be like, am I even saved? Am I even a child of God? Because I haven't heard the spirit's voice saying, Jack, you're a child of God. Right. You know? Yeah. Right. And that's, Reading the Bible is literally, it's communion with God. It, that spirit is speaking to you, and you know you have that relationship, you know, as you're reading the Word of God. It's just, you don't don't even doubt it. No, no. And the Lord's blessing you. He's rebuking you. He's crafting you into the image of Christ. And, you know, if you're truly saved and you open up the Word of God and let it sat- saturate your life, um, yeah, I mean, you are not going to have any doubts whether or not you're the child of God. God's going to minister. T- and, you know, I think uh, uh, John chapter number 10, my sheep uh, know my voice and they follow me. Um, you know, again, you'll hear your shepherd's voice say, oh, I belong to the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you have the security salvation. To the world. Then every benefit underneath the sun. Um, you know, Second Peter, what is it, one three. Uh, according to these divine and precious promises, we are partakers of the divine nature. Um, what does he say? Uh, God has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. And so any blessing on earth uh, you're going to receive through the principles of the word of God. True blessing, true yes. success. Because mm-hmm. you meditate th- there in day and night. Um, that that he is going to be a prospering tree. Yeah. Joshua, Joshua 1, 8. 1 8. Yep. Go ahead, you can quote it. I'm doing this t- t- book of the law. Oh, there you go. Shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein, therein in day and day night. And night. Then and thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Then thou shalt have good success. Right. And so success comes through uh, the book of the law. So right. if you're meditating there in day and night, you're going to receive. God's success, mm-hmm. and you don't want the world's success. Because if your mind is immersed in God's law, the mm-hmm. principles of his word is, are going to guide every decision you make. Right. And it's always going to lead you down the right path. Mm-hmm. And um, one of the things people say is, now, you ever read your, do you remember what you read this morning? Dave? <laughs> uh, you know, I'd have to think about it. You know, it's not like right <laughs> okay. there. So, so you made my point. Exactly. I, I remember reading my lamentations because I'm like, man, this is sad. And one of the one of the things that cheered me up about this, this is not because I identify with Jeremiah and I'm thinking kind of the same lines like, oh, man, how this country is destroyed. You know, people are destroyed, not seeking after God. Like, yeah, you're right, Jeremiah. This is terrible. Uh, but then I remembered this is actually Christ weeping over Jerusalem through Jeremiah. Mm-hmm. It's like the spirit of God in him. Uh, and so that was encouraging because I'm thinking, I'm looking, you know, I'm taking pity on myself because I'm, you know, like Jeremiah, I know what you're saying, Jeremiah. He was singing the blues and I was singing with him. <laughs> and, yeah. and, um, and then I was, oh yes, this is, this is Christ's spirit. So I remembered my, what I had this morning, this morning for breakfast, um, out of God's word. But, um, most, well, not most, a lot of days, I don't remember what I read that morning. But uh, someone says, well, I don't remember what I read in the Bible. And I got news for you, you do. Right. 
it ran through the recesses of your brain. It was like downloading, um, you know, God's software into your uh, brain, and um, it's in there. It passed through your uh, your brain. It also has a cleansing effect for your mind. Mm -hmm. Like you know, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Um, And and you know. Uh, Jesus talked about the washing of the water of the word, mm-hmm. wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Right. Um, I heard an illustration one time. It was a young man and a godly farmer, and the young man was talking to the uh, old man and said, you know, a lot of times I read my Bible and I don't remember what I read. Um, and so the, they were picking apples off the apple tree, and um, he says, take that basket over there. Of course, they picked the apples, put it in the basket. He says, go down the, the stream right down here. And he says, and scoop up some water and bring it back to me. So he went down there and scooped up the water. Well, you know, if you scoop up water in a basket, it's not going to hold it. So it all, by the time he got to the old man, all the water was through the basket. Uh, and he says, now you have water in the basket? He said, no. He says, but you notice something different about the basket. He said, yeah, it's clean. Mm-hmm. Like all that water passed through. Right. So, you know, encourage folks to say, yeah, I do it, but I don't remember. Uh, you do. It's in the back parts of your mind. And then also it did a cleansing work when it it passed through your mind and your soul uh, as you read it. Right. So, yeah. Well, let's talk about practical stuff, huh? For sure. So next on my dock is a time and a place. Mm-hmm. And so to establish a habit, there should be your Bible reading space. What's your Bible reading yeah, I definitely Space. think that anything that's an important thing in your life, which, and this is of utmost importance, is going to have a time and a place. And it's easy for me. This is in my recliner in the morning, first mm-hmm. thing when I get up. And it's just, it's not even, you know, something that I have to struggle to do. It's just something that I've gotten the rhythm of it's doing. It's been ingrained in you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I tell people too, again, I'm talking about habit again. Right. Um, I say I I don't I don't read the Bible every day because I'm spiritual. It's I true. read the Bible every day because I'm habitual. It, it's so true. Like I can't not do it. I've done it for so long in mm-hmm. my in my day. Just psychologically, again, it's not because I'm spiritual. Yeah, I'd be like, you know, something's wrong. I got to read my Bible. Think of these people. They roll out of bed and just go to work. I mean, I can't even imagine that. Yeah, you know. And people that struggle to be on time for wherever they're going in the morning. And it just could never happen because I'm just so used to getting up early enough to spend time with the Lord. In uh, um, the world talks about grounding and centering yourself. And people do this by journaling. And then they do this by like meditation and then writing down their priorities and uh, writing out their eulogies and trying to center themselves and try to figure out the big picture, why they do all the things that they do. Um, because they know if you just let life take control, you know, the Bible talks about being blown about by every wind of doctrine, um, that if you didn't spend that time in the word of God, you wouldn't be planted on that solid rock. And then you were, you're just going to be exposed to the elements of the day. And then especially, man, you let a few days go, you're just drifting out to sea and you don't know which way's up, which way's down. And yeah, you get out of bed in the morning and just roll out and like head off to work and all the, you know, the craziness of the day and busyness and there's always all forms of media we're listening to and people talking to and putting out fires all day long and you never took a quiet time Mm -hmm. um you know the world talks a lot about today like a lot of high performers talk about meditation well i got news for you you know christians have been real cool for a long long time they stole that (laughs) yes uh and so the meditating they're in i muse while the fire burned Mm -hmm. um you talk about being grounded rooted you take psalm one he's like a tree planted Planted. you take jesus said in matthew 7 at the end of the sermon on the mount you hear and do these sayings of mine jesus saying the word of god you know when the storms come the the winds blow you're building your house on a rock Mm -hmm. it will not fall a foundation right anchor for the soul Mm -hmm. yeah if you didn't have the word of god you wouldn't have an anchor and Mm -hmm. really i would lose my own personal identity Mm mm-hmm if I didn't read the Bible, that is like who I am because I've done it for so long. I mean, that is Jack. Amen. And you are your habits. Right. Um, And so I've got a lot of things wrong in my life, but that ain't one of them. You know, I got 99 problems, but my Bible reading ain't one. And, you know, and I can say by the grace of God, praise the Lord. Amen. Because if I didn't have my Bible reading, 
man, it, it would really mess up my life. Now I can increase, I can grow, I can get way better. Sure. But you've got to fight for that habit and, you yes. know, get your foot in the door and establish that. Um, so yeah, time and a place. I think the first thing out of the blocks during the day for the majority of people listening um, is going to be the best thing. Give There's something in the Bible about first. Now I know the Jewish day, you know, started in the evening. Um, and we, we should, you know, try to establish a habit of having an evening time just of reflection, maybe read a short devotional. Well, the Bible says meditate day yeah. and night. Yeah. So in, And David said evening and at morning and at noon mm-hmm. will I pray. Um, and so evening would have been the first part of his day because in the Jewish mind, that's when the, the new day starts mm-hmm. is in the evening. Yeah. Um, and so the first part, second part, morning, Daniel prayed three times a day. So there was time, pauses and reflection. Mm-hmm. Um, I like to say this about, you mentioned the first thing of the day, and I completely agree with that, even, for, even in our culture in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um, I like to look at and use this analogy, like if you think of your mind as a, uh, like a, like a clear a glass bottle filled with sand, and the day shakes it up. And it's so it's difficult to focus to see through it, but after you sleep through the night, everything settles, and you can see clearly. Mm-hmm. And so you have a much when you go to the Word of God with a clear mind, you're going to get more out of it. You know, you could wake up late and read it later in the morning or that evening, and I just it, it, I don't think it's the same. It's not I don't gonna, think, yeah, because I've had those mornings too. You got to rush out the door, mm-hmm. and then you make up for it later. And I and I. Do I mean I you know, very very seldom when I miss the Bible reading, but it like you're saying it's been busy and I have a really hard time quieting my mind. I haven't had that you know whatever the REM sleep does to your brain where it kind of resets everything. Um, yeah, and and so my mind is racing, mm-hmm. and and that's another troubleshooting thing that we can talk about is like everybody 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 has a monkey mind, meaning like you're reading your Bible. And you're thinking about the laundry and the dishes and doing this with the kids. And somehow you're still like reading and you get down to the end of the chapter, like, whoa, Mm -hmm. I'm not paying attention to anything I'm reading here. That's normal. Yeah. Yeah. For those of you out there. There's nothing wrong with you. Yeah. That is something you have to fight constantly. And so I think it's worse the later on in the day that goes. No doubt. If it's in the morning, you can, you can focus and, um, you haven't had all a bunch of distractions yet and people you have to email back or call or do this or do that hanging over your head. It's that pause and uh, yeah, fight for it. Get up earlier or whatever time and place. Yeah. I think you got to give yourself permission to say that everything else is not important until this Mm -hmm. gets done. Absolutely. So, you know, in life, you know, all high performance people, there's like, you know, the 80, 20 rule that 20% of what you do gives you 80% of the, of the results. Well, that's the word of God. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's, that's the, you know, give that time. the one thing. What's the big thing? Uh, all these different questions you're supposed to answer. What's the one thing that you need to do today to change your day? What's the most important thing uh, in your life? What's the one thing and so the Bible is going to fit into all of those categories because everything has to do with God. God created you. Uh, who keeps you here is God. Where you're going is God. And so God is the one thing. And how does God minister to you? How does God speak to you directly? And it's going to be through the Word of God. Mm-hmm. So it's very, it's very easy. Again, no time in Bible reading, no time in prayer is wasted prayer. Absolutely. That's no good. one got to the end of their life said, you know, I think I spent too much time <laughs> in prayer and communion with God through the Bible. And I think really think that um, as God communicates with you, there's different times in your in your life, like you say, oh, I'm going to spend the day reading my Bible or whatever. You know, sometimes you, like Joshua with AI, and he falls down flat on his face when they got defeated, and God said, "Get up off your, get up off the ground. You got stuff in your camp to take right. care of." Yeah, it's not time to pray. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I think f- seldom we get to that point. Most of us yeah. um, do not spend enough time in prayer. Right. But I remember Lee Robertson. They quoted him as, um, you know, later on in life, you know, and he had a very successful ministry. I had an amazing church, huge Bible co- uh, college, Tennessee Temple University, sending missionaries and preachers all over the world. Um, and they asked him, you know, he lived well into his 90s, 
what would you do? Is Would you do anything different if you spent that whole time over again? And he's a very godly man, you know, lived into his 90s with a good reputation and beloved. Uh, he said, I would have spent more time reading my Bible and praying. <laughs> wow. And, and um, Amen. Yeah. So, yeah, no one ever has regretted it. So, yeah, justify whatever time you need to separate yourself from everything else, all your all your other responsibilities in the world, uh, family, kids, you name it. Um, you know, it's one of those things. Without me, you can do nothing. So, you, so, you know, as a mother, you can say, well, I've I got to do this for my kids, do that for them. What they really need is a mother who has communion with God. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, same with the with the children. I, I try to do a habit with my kids. Again, I, you know, I just want them in the habit of reading their Bible, mm-hmm. but I have like in the summer, I have them read one chapter a day. So that's like minimum effective dose. Like mm-hmm. they can handle a chapter. They got nothing else going on the whole day, really, right. except for fun time. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I was FaceTiming with Adriana earlier. I was like, did you read your chapter? So like, yeah, I already read it. <laughs> and um, Amen. yeah, so I'm trying to even in really what, Character is parenting yourself. So mm-hmm. right now I'll be that parent for them. Right, right. And then hopefully later they'll have character yes. and they'll parent themselves and say, well, I got to, I got to open up the word of God. And you hope as they're reading it, it becomes real to them and God mm-hmm. works in their life so that they want it. Right. They get that taste. Yeah. And so my dream is, is that someday I don't ever have to remind them. Yes. So like my dad didn't have to call me this morning mm-hmm. or <laughs> FaceTime me and say, Jack, did you read your chapter today? Um, yeah. No, yeah, I did that on my own. And so, hope, you know, that, that's the dream with the kids sure. is you uh, building them the habit mm-hmm. and that later on. And it's the thing, I don't want to force my kids because then they won't want to later. Well, let me ask you a question. Um, do you brush your teeth? Did your mother make you brush your teeth when you were a kid? Right. <laughs> I, I eat vegetables. I would have never eaten vegetables unless I was forced to. Right. But now, man, I can eat a, I had a salad for lunch. Amen. Because mama made me eat vegetables when I was a kid. So I think even, side note, um, even with your kids, you try to build in, I would say something, don't ever use that as a punishment. I would say, Johnny, you were a bad boy. Sit there and read your Bible for an hour. <laughs> I would never, ever, no, ever no, no. do that. Right. Um, cause the Bible, like, oh, like you said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, if I'm going to win somebody to Christ, even just my own kids, it's gotta be, it's a delightful thing to do this. Amen. So yeah, I would say whatever little bit of habit you can have minimum effective dose, I'd call it just to build in your kid's mind that, uh, I have to, I need time for God every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So any, anyhow, let's, let's talk about practical, um, aspects. Got any, I'm thinking of your Bible. Um, perhaps you have a prayer journal. Yeah. So for me, you know, you talked about some people have just personal preference about marking in their Bible and such. And I, I, you know, for me, I've always got a pen. I've always got a highlighter. I always got a notebook. I don't always write in the notebook, but I always have it ready. Um, and if you have a pen in your hand, you feel like a student. You feel like you're ready to receive. Yes. Yeah. Yep. You're kind of like, you know, it's like a group of guys standing around throwing a football, and you're you're like kind of ready to catch. <laughs> okay, anytime you want to throw mm-hmm. me something. Yeah. Yeah. And I I have in my my plan, I'm always writing um, notes on it, what time I start, what time I finish, how long it took me. Um, just kind of crossing things off as I go. That's All great. those little things. And do you keep that record somewhere? I do. And every What's time it like I, in a journal? Um, I have a drawer, a file that I keep all my finished Bible reading records. And it's on a paper? It's on a, uh, I, I have it all typed out on eight and a half, uh, 11 fold and a half like this. And so I, when I get done with it, I just write at the top, you know, the dates from this to this, and then throw it in the file. And it's with like past notebooks and such. They're all kind of together in the same area. That is awesome. And so how long does it take you to fill out a paper? Um, it's just a matter of, what do you mean? So you're, you're, you're writing down what time you started and what time you finished. Mm-hmm. And then what else are you writing on there? The date? No, no. That, I mean, that's our, yeah, I write the day, the date. And when I, when I start reading, I write what time it is. And when I get done, I write 
you know, what time I get done and how long. On one piece of paper, and then you put that one piece of paper in the drawer? Oh, oh no, 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 no. No, that's on each day. Okay. And then when I finish the whole program, I put that away in the drawer. After, oh, so you have your program printed out for the whole year? Well, for the whole Bible. For the whole Bible. Okay. And so what kind of program is it? It's just like for right now, I'm in a particular one that I made where uh, it's... An, How'd you print this off? Like on a, a word, spreadsheet just a, type It's thing? just a Word doc with with columns. And there's two columns per half page. Mm-hmm. And it's Genesis through Revelation. But I had it... Um, it tells you the chapters that you're supposed to be reading every day. Yep. So I have I have it divided up. So it's Genesis to Job, Psalms and Proverbs every other day alternating, and then Ecclesiastes through Malachi, and then the New Testament. So I'm in four different sections of the Bible every day. Every day. And you have four ribbons in your Bible? I don't. And I'm, Why not? I, I want I want to get that. And I actually asked some of our young ladies if you go, if you go on to Amazon. Yeah. You can get one, and they're a simple. You can get the ones that you get hot glue. In the mm-hmm. in the back, I've done those before. Or you get there's like a little slider thing that slides in there, and you've got the four additional ribbons right then. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it just it just an insert. It goes in the back, oh, and you don't okay. have to glue it or anything. And it's got like four ribbons on it, and it's ready to go, man. I it's, like that. It's, yeah, it's like five bucks or something like that. Huh. Yeah. Okay, I'm I'm getting you, that. Yeah, you need to <laughs> for sure. But and the thing is, and you're talking about practical things, I, I also have at the same time, I have my uh, Bible audio app. And so I'm playing that at the same time, and I like it because... It, what it, Bible audio app do you use? It's uh, it's specifically called Bible Audio. Okay. And it's actually, it's a branch of the Gateway Bible yeah. app. But this one, it's just particular for Bible audio. Of course, it has a King James Version, and you can regulate the speed. That is really cool. So you can pick 1.25, 1.5, 1.75, and 2.0. So it's Bible audio. It's just plain Bible audio. It's all okay. it's all called. And so I like, I mean, you can think what you want about this, but when I'm when I'm reading through things that are more thought-provoking, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll slow it down. But when I'm reading through um, genealogies, I'll put it on 2.0. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so I'm getting, th- I'm reading every word. But um, I, I want to soak myself in things that I think are more devotional, more um, nourishing spiritually. Yeah. But not to diminish the importance of everything. So I, yeah, I have on my phone, it's, uh, man, I don't, let me try to go back here. Home. It doesn't even say in this, but it's it just, it's, yeah, some Bible app and you can read it and you can play it as well and you can speed it up. Mm-hmm. So the normal is going to sound like, See if I can do this. Oh, you know what? I'm connected here. <laughs> Furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us, I'm going to give him a cup of coffee. You ready? To please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye give should another abstain cup of coffee. from fornication. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel <laughs> in sanctification and honor, not in the lust Double of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. That no man go beyond and deport his mother <laughs> in any matter because of... And so... Um, Mine's way better. Listen to this. It's yeah, yours is going to sound... Now, as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. It's anyway. beautiful. Yeah, so um, I have... Yeah, I have some on my... Um, if you have... Um, Audible, an Audible account, so I get that one credit a month deal, uh, and so I have some audio dramatized Bibles on there as well, like Zondervan's, and there's some other one, and uh, yeah, it's got that background music, and so if a woman's speaking, it's a woman, if it's God's voice, it sounds more like, you know, uh, yeah. James Earl Jones, and then if it's a Satan, it's kind of, you know, some deviant sounding character And when you talking. got a battle, you got like swords clanging yes. in the background. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah the cool. disciples are on a ship, you can hear the mass creaking in the back, and, uh, you know, the wind and the waves blowing, or the swine running down the hill, or, right. you know, whatever, you can hear that sound. So yeah, there's some really nice ones out there. And so I, I like to do this with um, uh, books as well. I like to, if I can get the audio book and then have the hard copy of the book, I can, man, I can read it uh, fast and comprehensively because you have it coming in two avenue, avenues. You have it um, coming through the eye gate and the ear gate. 
you know, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yeah. We're, we're going to have a challenge in September. I, I haven't like worked on the incentives or anything for this or that it's going to be faith cometh by hearing. I'm going to encourage the people to listen to the word of God apart from their regular Bible reading. Mm-hmm. Cause that is something special when you hear the, hear the Bible. Right. If you're traveling any distance to work in the morning, it's a great thing to do. Mm-hmm. Play God's word. You know, there's all kinds of opportunities when you're working around the house. Yeah, um, Jim Alter makes a point, and I know he's going to be uh, over at Heritage here in, in a couple of weeks, and he's going to do a session on Friday on um, what is, what's it called? The King- I think it's called Purified Seven Times History of the King James okay. Bible Workshop, something like that. Yeah, so it's going to be a history of the King James Bible. Um, one of the points that he makes is that the King James Bible was in, was um, translated. And the verbiage was used to be read out loud in the right. churches. Mm-hmm. Um, and and one of the reasons why the King James is so easy to memorize is because it's rhythmic and it's metered um, and it's very it's very musical. Mm-hmm. It's one of the greatest works of art in human history, really. Um, and so he was saying how that uh, a lot of portions that would be hard for people when they read. He said, you know, when you read the Bible in church, he said, people come up to me afterwards and say, um, you know, I can really understand the Bible better when you read it. And I said, well, you know, the Bible was meant to yes. be heard. Mm-hmm. And then you think about back when, um, when God had these men of, men of God pen, you know, the, the Holy Spirit moved. These men were filled with, as the uh, Spirit spake, as these men were moved by the Holy Ghost. And uh, so they penned the Word of God. And then you didn't have a multiplicity of copies of, like nobody had their own personal Bible. And probably even in Jesus' time, for someone to have any copy of Scripture, any book of Scripture in their home was almost unheard of because it was right. so expensive. There's no printing press. So how did they, And they would, but they would memorize great portions of the Word of God. For mm-hmm. thousands of years, this is how it worked before the 1500s and the printing press, is that you would, you would go to the synagogue and they would read Scripture. Mm-hmm. Paul wrote to Timothy and said, give attendance to reading. Mm-hmm. And we really probably don't, even to this day, do enough reading of the Word of God in the um, in the church services. But the Bible, first and foremost, talk about read the Bible every day. Uh, people heard it and memorized it um, audibly first. Yeah, I remember one of the most awesome services I ever went to when I was a teenager. We went to pastor school, and the fella quoted the book of Revelation. Mm-hmm. And you just talk about the place being in a frenzy. Yeah. I mean, it was awesome. Very, very, very powerful, huh? Yes, yes. And, and all he, what was his name? Do you remember? Oh, man. I want to say like Paul Johnson. Okay. Because somebody sent me a video by somebody who just quotes the book of Revelation. And it was actually on YouTube. I didn't, he was I, actually like someone that came through the, uh, what do you call that ministry? The, the, the homeless. Oh, or wow. The, the, what do they have that home that people go to? The, the mission, mission, the rescue mission, the mission, rescue mission. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah, yeah. He he was like some of the went to the rescue mission and incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's something. And so yeah, so give attendance to hearing it, especially if you can, if you have access to that. Um, I mean, yeah. You mentioned family devotions too, and sometimes we would do that with the kids, and we would listen. We'd have this guy listen, and we, you know, it's good to have everyone read, but some mm-hmm. once in a while we would just, you know, have it play. Yeah. Listen to it that way. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Right now in my household, all the kids can read. Um, Teddy, who's eight, is not as quick as the other two. Um, but uh, yeah, we just, we're reading through Psalms right now. And so usually I'll, I'll ask questions when we're done and I'll uh, ask, you know, you know what this word means? Or, um, you know, I'll just, they'll, they'll have the Bible out in front of them. And then we take prayer requests and then we uh, pray. But that's another great thing in Avenue. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to do family devotions. It's very, very simple. Just grab a Psalm, whoever can read, uh, or s- some portion of scripture. I know, uh, Clarence Sexton has a nice family devotional guidebook and what it is, is different stories mm-hmm. in the Bible. And it's 365 of them. Mm-hmm. And then there's qu- like 20 questions from the story. So the family can read the Bible story together. And then you just go down there and ask the different questions going down. It's right from that story. That's, that sounds like a great resource. Yeah. No. One other thing before I move on from this point is I have also a, a Webster's 1828 app. And so a lot of times as I'm reading through the scripture, 
just hey, what's that word mean? Mm-hmm. And you bring it bring it up, and I just sometimes I'll just write it right in my Bible, um, just so next time I read it I'll know. And you have a wide margin Bible? I don't. It's not wide margin, but it's got enough space. Enough for, space to write a definition. For, in. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, that's great. So, so one of the tools you're using is uh, your Bible. Listen to it audibly. And then have some sort of a dictionary. And particularly, you know, if you're in the 21st century, uh, you have a little um, app on your phone. And I do have the Webster's 1828 on my phone as well. Yeah, you can say, what does that word mean? And look it up. And it's really a meditative tool. 1828 is so neat because a lot of times I'll be studying for a sermon and I think, well, the predominant uh, word in this portion of scripture I'm reading through the book or through the chapter is like, for instance, first Peter is going to be hope. Mm-hmm. So I look up hope in the Webster's 1828. And sometimes, you know how you have like six different definitions of the word hope. And it's talking about different contexts in which it's used. Uh, well, Webster, I believe, uh, if I remember correctly, that if you look up under hope, it's going to have, um, like definition number two, and it's talking about the hope is in the biblical hope, and it talks about the expectation of a future event, and then it also will give a Bible reference, and mm-hmm. I believe the Bible reference for hope is First Peter chapter number one, mm-hmm. and he quotes the verse saying, this is what kind of hope I'm talking about in this definition right here. Mm-hmm. And so the Webster's 1828 is nice, and um, if you look up definitions, it's kind of a meditative tool, mm-hmm. like you have a favorite portion of scripture and you want to, you know, just dwell on that. You can just start picking apart those different words and thinking about what those words mean. And yeah, so that's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's see. Um, How about prayer journal? You can do prayer journal. I have a prayer booklet that I've made up. It's printed out and it's based on the outline of Luke 11. I have different scriptures printed throughout it. So Luke 11 is Lord's prayer. Right. And uh, so that's kind of the basic outline of it. Mm Mm-hmm. And you produce that yourself? I do. You do? I you do. Know, I do produce I it. do produce it for like the mass mass audiences or what? I could for if the, they For want. those members of I could. furtherancemedia.org? <laughs> if they wanted it. Oh, that's cool. We uh, we we put out a prayer journal. This is uh, partly Dennis Corll's prayer journal. We bought, if they had very reasonable, I can't remember what we paid for these things, like 12 bucks or something. I mean, you couldn't put it together for... Uh, what we paid for it. Like if you want the staples or something. Mm -hmm. So he had a lot of nice um, outlines in his and we added to it. And it was a lot of stuff that I had collected over the years, just different prayer lists. And did I ever show you this? This thing's amazing. If you want to... Pastor, I can't even think of what my email is. Pastor, I don't know, something. But somehow reach out to me, look up Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church. I'll sell you one for 20 bucks. that's, That's what we charge our people. That's what I'll sell you. But we have amazing... Um, Bible lists, and they're all laminated, and there's di- different um, preachers, church family, wayward Christians, ministry needs. Jack Young, for America. 633 at iCloud.com. There you go. I was thinking, I have one, a Gmail account for the podcast that I did. I'm like, I need an email. Yeah. And it's like Pastor Jack something at Gmail, but. Yeah, that one ain't going to work. But yeah, Jack Young, 63 at iCloud. There you go. Um, yeah, email me. But uh, all sorts of Bible prayer lists here, and there's like the prayers of Paul and all sorts of things. So th- that um, that's a pretty intensive prayer journal, But uh, and I don't, I rarely would like go through it all at one time. It would take you forever. Mm-hmm. People say, I could never pray for an hour. Well, I couldn't either if like all I was going to do was to talk to the Lord like I would you know, um, try to think of all the things that, but if you have a prayer list and it's well organized, you can pray for a lot, lot longer than you think. You're actually will run out of time before you're done. Mm -hmm. So I'll use a prayer journal after my Bible reading. Um, I think really the Bible reading, meditating on the word of God really primes the pump for prayer. Um, I don't use a prayer journal every day. Uh, usually the days that I don't, um, I'll find a section in my scripture reading that I can really pray over and use those points of the pray, the praying or the prayer and spend time in prayer that way. Or I do have a lot of those ribbons in my Bible at home and I'll flip to the Psalms and I will read like a, a page to, um, to the next page of the Psalm. And then I'll use that as my prayer guide. Mm-hmm. 
And so I'm talking to the Lord about, of course, you know, my family, my church family, just different needs that are on my mind, but also using that, uh, you know, the Psalms teach us how to walk with God. So they're really pattern prayers for us. So we mm-hmm. can kind of pray along with the psalmist, whatever he's asking for, we can kind of make it our own. Um, so I, I like doing that uh, along with my Bible reading. So yeah, um, generally, now you're, you're setting like uh, world records on your Bible reading this year, aren't you? For me personally, I am. Let me just say this before you leave that subject. Yeah. Um, if you're wondering out there, you know, what's the right way to do it, what what you should do first, Bible reading, prayer. I used to pray first. I used to get out of bed, and, and I like to walk while I pray and just go out for a walk and whatever. And um, I don't always use the – I usually don't use the booklet because I mostly have it memorized. But anyway, um, then uh, we had a conversation years ago. I don't know if you remember or not, but you, you had taught me about, about some things that you would learn from Clarence Sex, and I believe it was about this idea of what should be first. And mm-hmm. I made that switch. And I began reading my Bible first, listen to God before I talk to God. Mm-hmm. And I really would I really would bear witness with that. It's been more of a blessing to me personally to do that. To it's get kind of like the, pre- get the pressure's off for your prayer time because the word starts penetrating you. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then also God kind of gives you a prayer list if you're really, de- you know, devotionally reading your wor- the word. I always look at like my Bible reading. I think a, a Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Uh, the martyr, um, he said uh, every time he opened up the Word of God, he would say, God is now speaking to me. Now, I know we read the Bible in its context. It means what, uh, who, is it, who is it written to, what did it mean to them, what was going on at the time. And Dietrich Bonhoeffer, of course, knows this, but um, you would contextualize it to your, de- your day and age. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, this was going on in the life of David. He was trying, you know, uh, Saul was trying to kill him, and he's interceding on his, well, you have enemies for your soul. Satan's after you. Um, you have um, different uh, enemies and vices and sins out there, and you can identify with David and En Gedi and cry out to the Lord mm-hmm. and, you know, pray his prayers and see yourself in that, your, that um, situation. Mm-hmm. You know, it says about the Bible these things were written for our admonition. Mm-hmm. So it's not a historical record only. It's right. not a scientific record only. Right. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not a history manual. It's not a science manual. Um, it, it's about, it's about uh, God mm-hmm. and it's about how, uh, about his nature and about, I mean, he's the, he is the character. Mm-hmm. He is the player in, in the word of God. So no matter where you're reading, there is something for you that day. So I try to, I'm, I'm not making it as like, cause I know that people think I read this today and that means it's not your fortune. Right. right. It's, not, it's not your yeah. um, astrology, you know, yeah, and, and usually your Bible reading is f- a fixed because it takes about the same amount of time every day. Yeah. So if you pray first, you know that sometimes when you're praying, you can get off in tangents mm-hmm. and then you could, you know, with a good heart, you could end up pushing your Bible reading right out, right out of the way. Yeah, and so it's a since it'd be and I know, and in my life that that happened a lot because I could I could justify keep praying. Mm-hmm. I'm in a rhythm, mm-hmm. you know, the spirit's moving or whatever, mm-hmm. and so then all of a sudden I'm rushing my Bible reading, and I and I think that hearing God speak. So, so what's what's more important, God speaking to you, or you speaking to God? Yeah, I think God speaking to you is more important. I think so too, because how do you know what to say to God unless God is speaking to you? And the Bible says to pray without ceasing. Mm-hmm. And so when you have put the word of God in your mind, in your heart, you know, throughout the day, you're continually voicing a prayer to God. Not that you don't prioritize it as, you know, this one thing I do at a certain time of the day, but still, you can't read the Bible all day. No. But you can pray all day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm with you there. And I know what you're talking about with um, with Clarence Saxton. He gave me a handout. I, if you go to pastorjack.org, uh, you can get it. Uh, but uh, it's How to Make Yourself Happy in the Lord by George Mueller. So Clarence Saxton gave us all, and I think he, he preached on it. Uh, and George Mueller used, talks, he gives the... Um, he gives the testimony about how he used to get up. Now he's a great, he is the great prayer warrior. Mm-hmm. I mean, logged 50,000 prayers in his, in his prayer journal and uh, took care of all these orphans in 
London or Bristol, England, uh, by essentially praying, never asked for money. They'd have just miracle after miracle on his prayer life. But he used to get up and try, he'd start praying and say how long it took for him for his spirit to be warm. Uh, he'd just be cold and dead. But then he changed and uh, he would get up and he would open up the scripture. And then he said, I would make myself happy in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And my happiness in the Lord would lead me to prayer. Mm -hmm. So the great prayer warrior said that Bible reading first was the most important thing, mm -hmm. that you warm your soul um, with with the Bible, and then you know the Spirit t starts talking to you, communicating to you through the Word. Uh, you can communicate back to the Lord, and you know you're supposed to pray in the Holy Ghost. You're supposed to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, the name of Jesus Christ means in accordance with His character, and so. We're, when we're looking in the Bible, we're looking into the character of Jesus Christ. So we see him through the word, and then we can say, um, I know what to pray for now. Mm -hmm. and, right. And, and so you can you can pray more precisely um, when you know the word. Sure. You know, how much different would your prayer life be if you prayed not knowing what God's word says? Mm -hmm. That is so huge. There, it's, it's inseparable. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Let's see. Reading plan. Oh, yeah. So how many times have you read the Bible this year? Um, Three. Three so far? <laughs> yes. How close are you to getting four times through? Let's see. Um, well, six months. After the, after the eighth month, it'll be, it'll be four. So after this month, we'll be... So after this month, at the end of August... Mm -hmm. 2022, Dave will have read his Bible four times. And then, so you're going to read it six times this year. Correct. That's awesome. What's the most you ever read it before that? That that'd be the, that would be the most. Six times, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, your dad said when he, was, when he was first pastoring at Heritage, um, he would read the Bible 45 minutes in the morning and then 45 minutes at lunch. And he said that he would be able to read the Bible six times in a year. And that's, that, that would be very accurate. It would take you, because you know, if I read the Bible through like four times in a year, it probably takes me 50 minutes a day, something like that. Well, for me, it, it, it's 50 minutes a day on 1.5 speed. Okay. And, and that's, that is not that fast, mm -hmm. 1.5. You know, I can read my Bible on 2.0, like no problem. Yeah, that, it, it, and also I have to little, say it de it depends upon who the reader is because some readers read a lot slower than others. Mm -hmm. So it depends on what um, Bible app you use. You might not be able to hang with 2.0, but some of them are very dramatic. Yeah, the 2.0 can be a little crazy. Yeah, on my app anyway. <laughs> okay, yeah, it just depends on the app and the speed of the the reader. But yeah, so it's 50 minutes a day, mm -hmm. and by the end of the a year, it would have been um, through the Bible six times. So what is that? Um, what's that been doing for you, traveling through the Bible um, so quickly and so much? I love the way I've set it up, and you know what? I would encourage you to pray about what God would have you do with God's Word because you know it's totally not about what somebody else is doing. This right. is what God led me to do for <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, there's no one size fits all. Yeah, this is what God led me to do for me, and I didn't start out doing it this way. I was going straight through. And then I just kind of figured out a way and took the time to just get it all the way I liked it. So I'm getting different, um, what do you call the, the different kinds of it just makes it's Poetry and history. Right. And New Testament. and It's got Old Testament, Psalms and Proverbs. Like and then New day. Testament. So it's Old Testament, Psalms and Proverbs, and then New, Te New Testament. Is that how it goes? No. So it's, it's like the first half, Genesis through Job. Okay. And then the second section is... It's alternating every other day, a psalm or a portion of the psalms and then a proverb. And so in 60 days, you're going through psalms and proverbs. Mm -hmm. And then the, the second half of the Old Testament, Ecclesiastes through Malachi. And then the fourth section is New Testament. So That's exactly what I said. It is? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. So Old Testament, well, psalms and proverbs, New Testament. Well, the Old Testament is divided in three... Well, two, two different sections, plus the Psalms and Proverbs. But every day you're reading Psalms and Proverbs, right? Yes. And you're reading the Old Testament. So yes. it's the Old Testament, Psalms, and Proverbs. Okay, I, I, get, <laughs> I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, but the broad just going through it um and that is breaking it up like that has um really helped like monotony or something of reading it just straight through. It it does. You're always reading something that's interesting, that's practical, that's personal and Psalms and Proverbs is very nice to read every day, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. I love it. I love when I get to that section. Because yeah. sometimes, you know, you're in a section before that that's like, you know, it's, like it's deeply maybe, historical maybe laborious in some, in some ways. Could be a chronology. You could be reading through Leviticus and all the rites and the mm-hmm. manners, customs. Right. Yeah. And it really stretches your, your mental and spiritual muscles. It, you know, it makes you your ability to... I always struggled with reading comprehension. Mm-hmm. And this has helped me with that your ability to retain and um, and it's something that it's taken me 20 years to work up to. And if you think about it in college, they break up your college into like five classes. And so doing multiple subjects at the same time is something that's normally done in education is they don't have, you don't have like English all day, every day for four weeks and then math, you know, for the next four. And it, no, it's all of them all at one time. Mm-hmm. So reading in different sections of your Bible is kind of like that because we're New Testament Christians living in the New Testament church age. So it's nice to be in the New Testament yes. during the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then also that Psalms teaches you how to walk with God. Mm-hmm. Proverbs teaches you how to walk with man. And then the Old Testament, all those things were written for our admonition. So, you know, I should be reading about the children of Israel's journey mm-hmm. or um, Esther or whoever, whatever Bible character I need to be reading about. Um, so it's a very holistic way to read your Bible. I know um, Grandma Young, she's, she still reads out of the, um, what's that called? The daily, in, da- it's some daily Bible and it breaks, th- you ever seen hers? The one that she reads from? Man, you live, you're like her next no, door I've, neighbor. No, I've seen, she does, she's, in her, she's in her Bible every day, no doubt. And she listens, she actually has a, a Bible DVD. Yeah, and watches it on TV. And she plays that while she's reading her Bible. Okay. Yeah. Now, she used to always have, I can't think, it's like the Daily Bread Bible, and it would give you, it's 365 sections, Mm -hmm. and um, each section is broken down to how you read the Bible. It would be Old Testament, Psalms and Proverbs, New Testament. Um, And so you'd read that every day. Grandma Young used to read six of those every day. So she would read through the Bible six times in a year. So she was essentially doing your Bible reading schedule. Mm. Yeah. So, like, going through the Word of God like that, so how has that helped you? Or how about um, last for ministry people? How does that help you in the ministry? Because you're in so many different portions of the Scripture, you, you're, you're seeing things that you can use to apply in messages you're preparing, lessons you're preparing, you're, and you're constant working with people. You're seeing something that could help somebody. And of course, first and foremost, you're applying it to yourself, which you should. And you're you are finding things that are encouraging to you and 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 filling needs that you have in your life. But really, that I think it's mainly helping. Just finding so many different areas that are practical to help in different areas of life. So fortunately, you know, um, you know, you and I don't work for a living because we're in the ministry. Yes. And um, I failed at everything else in my life, so I had to be a minister. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but one of the you know one of the joys of it's a blessed bondage, I'll say, is that you're constantly preparing and speaking or teaching or whatever. Uh, so you do a lot of that, and then golden handcuffs. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, <laughs> blessed ball and chain, <laughs> and that's like you know you got to be fresh three times a week. Um, and so you're studying different portions of the Bible. The reason why I like for personal Bible reading and personal edification is just to read, uh, portions, you know, um, a Christopher Lamentations into an Ezekiel and, um, you know, I'll be reading all about Ezekiel's visions tomorrow. And then, then not every day, but some days I'll jump to Psalms and Proverbs and I'll, I'll read them through continually, but not every day. It depends on how good Ezekiel is like. If he's like seeing UFOs and wheel side <laughs> wheel and <laughs> flying scrolls and everything, I might be like really into it. Uh, I'll be like, man, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask him, what in the world were you talking about? But um, but anyway, so I'll be there tomorrow, and I might stop by Psalms and Proverbs and, um, in, in, and have that routine. But here's how it helps me. 
So I've got different, I'm like working on Galatians and first Peter right now, preaching church. I get to read through those and study those. And I try to read through them at minimum once a week. If it was, if I was a robot and I had the perfect day every day, I would read Galatians once and first Peter once. That would be mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. Um, so I really, so I'm really studying them and, and I'm getting those down and I get to zoom in for my job. I get paid to do this. Mm-hmm. I get to zoom in and figure out what um, Peter is saying to the scattered church, exactly what he's saying. I want to find out uh, what exactly is being communicated to them by the Holy Spirit. Same with Galatians, you know, and I, you know, you get into the, the, the background historically, you know, what was, where was Paul at for, you know, the uh, first and second missionary journey. And then uh, what were they going through? So I'm studying this. Um, so for my daily Bible reading, now I think layman, sometimes you, you, we can do something else on Bible study, pick portions of the scripture and probably um, part of your day or part of your devotions could be studying a particular subject. Or particular book of the Bible. I think it would be great. But for me, the reason why I like going through the flow of scriptures and like reading through the Bible, I used to do it four times a year, every year. I'm really down to three, but I monkey around. And so I'm, you know, I get through three definitely, and then it's three plus. Mm-hmm. And, um, but I used to do it four times a year, every year. And the way that helps is um, you see the continuity of the whole Bible and how it's all drawn together. And you can see how what, um, Paul is writing to the Galatians how that is is true in the Old Testament as well as in the New Testament. And um, that grace we have in Christ Jesus, a, a saving grace and a serving grace, by the grace of God I am what I am. Mm-hmm. So I can see that being played out all throughout Scripture in, in while I'm reading it through. So, so you kind of get an overview when you read it that fast. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going through it like you're going to be through it six times a year, so you really have a grasp on the whole picture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one thing I did one time that I really enjoyed was you talk about kind of from a layman's perspective, you want to study God's Word, is I I got a uh, life application chronological Bible, mm-hmm. and I decided I was going to read every page of that, every note, and so I just, I divided up the pages and said, I'm going to read this amount of pages every day, and so it was a great way to, and that was very ed- Oh, man, that's a, that's a lot, and that's a really good Study Bible. I was telling somebody about it, and they said, "Oh man, I always thought it was um, like milk toast or something because it's life application. It, can't, it sounds too, yeah, you know, pop culture ish, but it's not. It's a it is a very good study Bible. And I did do that. Um, I read all the notes in the New Testament, mm-hmm. and my plan was to do what you did and do all the ones in the Old Testament. But I gave up somewhere along the line. I have read through it chronologically using that. It's right there. The, you have the hardback." I do. Yeah. So that's that one right there. That's the one. Yeah. So, and, that, and that's nice. And I think that's a nice thing to do for somebody. I wouldn't do that all the time. The graphics are beautiful in it. Mm-hmm. Really is. It, and you, it's, it's not just yeah, charts notes. and yeah, layouts charts and, and maps and yep, everything timelines else. And, um, and, and so, uh, you know, if, especially if I was a layman and I didn't get paid to study the Bible, that's definitely like those some nice study Bibles are just a great resource yeah. and you can spend time. Take two years and go through that. Yeah. Yeah. It would, yeah. It'd really be a benefit. Let's see. Keeping distractions at bay. Yeah. Th- I mean, this is pretty cut and dry. I mean, you got to get alone. You got to just eliminate. Um, that's another reason for first thing in the morning and you know, get your phone notifications out of the out of the situation, and just you know, get up before everyone else if you can, or find a lonely place, and just you just got to do it that way. I wouldn't look at any screens. That's the only bad thing about like re- reading from an iPad is you got those other apps on there, you get those notifications. Someone sends you a text or whatever, but yeah, don't look at any screens. Um, you know, Jesus said. In Matthew chapter number six, enter into thy closet and when thou hast shut the door. That means all the world needs to be out. And uh, so go in that special place if you have to get up earlier or whatever um, so you can have quiet time. And uh, again, your mind's going to wander and you're going to find yourself getting up. Oh, I got to go out of the plants or I got to. And, um, and then, oh, don't beat yourself up. It's just sit back down in your seat, open your Bible back up and just um, stay on point. And um, 
again, we already talked about this, but it's such a priority. You just make time for it. And you don't ever have to feel bad. Yeah. About spending time in the word of to God. To be honest with you, it, it's the most, it really is the most enjoyable time of my day. Yeah, absolutely. You get a cup of coffee and the word of God, it's quiet. No one's texting you. No one's asking to do anything. It's just, you're feeding yourself. And it's always sad to leave. You know, like, yeah. oh, I'm running out of time here. Yeah. This, is, this was fun. I got to yeah. stay here for longer. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so special. Yeah, so special. Well, we probably wrap it up there, man. We've talked for a long time. So if you endured to the end, uh, thank you for hanging with us. And stay tuned. Go to pastorjack.org, sign up for our blog, and go to furtherancemedia.org, right? Com. Dot com. com. Furtherancemedia.com. We are a for profit business. Okay. That's yeah, right. good deal. Good deal. So uh, Dave can work on your website. He's got two tracks. I'm reminding him right now that he's designing for us. They're going to be great on his repertoire. And uh, he does a great job on tracks, about yours. Every Door Direct Mail. It's time to do the back-to-school mailers right now, back-to-church mm-hmm. uh, mailers. We've done that a bunch of times through him. And so look uh, there at furtherancemedia.com. Look Dave up. He'll do a great job for you. Anyway, God bless each and every one of you. Stay tuned. We'll have some interesting podcasts coming up. Thank you so much for watching or listening to the Pastoral Thoughts Podcast. And we'd love to hear from you. Please reach out to us at pastorthoughtsmail at gmail.com. Also, if you want to check out more uh, about our ministry here, you can visit pastorjack.org. I do have a blog that I do write. I'd love to have you as one of my subscribers there. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.